Hey guys, welcome back to the farm. My name is Susie and I'm the owner and creator here at Susie on the Farm. In today's video, I have some really amazing thrift store makeovers for you. So let's go ahead and get started with project number one. This one's really not a thrift store makeover, but it's something that you can get for a very inexpensive drop cloth. I like to get my drop cloth at Harbor Freight. I just love the color of it and I pre-wash and dry it. So we're going to be using the farm animal stamp today. These are IOD and you can get these on my website susieonthefarm.com. It's got these five or six really amazing farm animals. So I am just going to stamp this chicken with some IOD black ink. I'm using a brayer because I really want to get the ink down into the fabric. If you're stamping on um, a solid surface, it goes on really bright, but sometimes on this drop cloth, you have to press a little bit harder. So once I get the stamp on, I am going to cut the chicken out and I'm gonna cut a little bit further out from the stamp just to have a little bit of excess around him. And then I'm also going to cut a back for, of the, out of the drop cloth for him. I do learn an easier way to do that here in a minute by cutting them both at the same time. Um, but once I get them both cut out evenly, then we are going to, we're going to make some ornaments out of all these farm animals. So I'm gonna speed through the rest of the animals here. We've got a pig, and I'm just using scrap pieces of drop cloth. Um, when I get a new one, I usually just put it on my table, fold it, and then I refold it different ways because to try to get uh, not a big blob of paint where you guys are viewing. So these are just kind of the ends that hang off my table and just scrap pieces of drop cloth. So we have a pig and a cow and a sheep, a rabbit and a chicken. And these are a pretty good size stamp. Um, you can tell uh, by my hand there that they're probably about the size of my hand. So like I said, I did find an easier way to cut them out by folding and cutting both pieces at the same time. That just ensures that they are cut the same and cuts down on some time as well. So I'm not using a thin mount here, but I did leave the plastic backing and just cut each animal out. If you do get some of the ink onto the plastic backing, I like to just take a baby wipe to wipe that off before I stamp because sometimes you will get the imprint of that as well. So now we have all our animals stamped and cut out. And for the ornament hangers, I'm just gonna use um, some of this um, off-white ribbon that I have. And then for some of them, I'll use the, like the trim pieces of the drop cloth. And I thought that looked really neat too. So we're going to just hot glue the hand, the, uh, the strings onto the back side of our ornament. And then we're just gonna go around the edge and hot glue the pieces of drop cloth together and leave an opening so we can stuff that here at the end. And for stuffing, um, I decided to just um, use something everybody has laying around the house and I'm gonna just use plastic bags. I used about one plastic bag per ornament and I did just cut them down to make it easier to stuff into them. And you'll see here in a minute, I'll use the pencil to push the uh, plastic down into the ornament. It doesn't have to be um, super thick, but I did want to get it evened out. Like I said, I think I ended up using 
an entire um, plastic grocery bag for each ornament. Maybe a little bit less. The cow, I think, held more than most. Finally, once I got him stuffed, I used just a little bit more hot glue to close up that last little spot. And I decided to put a bow on him around his neck. So I just hot glued that on. And then the last step, I'm going to take uh, my little finger sander and just rough up all the edges of the drop cloth. Not, you know, so it doesn't look like I just cut it and then I'll cut off any of the excess hangings. And I'll finish that up with all five of these ornaments and y'all these are so stinking cute and farmhouse looking they are a great addition to if you have a farmhouse tree and I just love the way that they turned out what do you guys think about these easy drop cloth farm animal ornaments leave a comment below when you comment on my videos it helps YouTube to share it out and I appreciate that so much you're helping my channel grow just by doing something easy and free. For today's second project, I thrifted this sleigh. It had Santa and a couple of just random Christmas items painted on it. The first thing I did was clean it up and I took it outside and I sanded it. Uh, there was It was a little raised, so I sanded it down to where it was really smooth. And then I put two coats of white paint. This is Fusion in the color casement. It's a really bright, clean white. So I covered the top and the little dowel rod both with some white paint. And then we are going to decoupage on this sleigh. Now this paper is called Neutral Christmas Masterboard. It is available on my website. It is this very neutral Christmas. It's got trees and animals. And I picked this one right here because I felt like that window frame kind of looked like a fireplace and I really loved the idea of uh, the Christmas tree living room and the fireplace and I was going to use a Santa but we'll get on into that more so I'm just cutting it a little bit larger than what I need it for and not trying to get into any of the other designs and then I decided I wanted to save that bird I didn't want to mess it up so I cut it off and placed it where there was a little hanging everywhere and we're gonna decoupage this on. I'm gonna use Fusion Decoupage and Transfer Gel and I'm gonna begin by starting with a small strip at the top. I'll just fold it back, put a even layer of the decoupage gel on and then I like to take my mister bottle and spray the decoupage paper. To me, that just helps so much with the wrinkles. I think it helps the paper stretch more, and I mean, you get really no wrinkles if you'll just wet your paper, paper before you put it down. So I did the little starter strip, and then I will work my way down the rest of the sleigh until we get this completely decoupage. So again, you put a uh, even layer of the decoupage gel, wet the paper, lay it down, and then I use my brush and whatever's left on there to smooth out any wrinkles and make sure that I get that into the um, medium on the bottom. So I'm just going to finish getting this all fixed up and then we'll move on to the next step. So after I got the decoupage done, 
I like to set anything that I've decoupaged up overnight. That way I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that it is dry before I start this next step. Because if you do this when it's wet, you will rip your paper. So I'm just gonna take my finger sander and get all the excess off the sides. And that cleans it up really nice and makes it um, look really good on all of the edges. But the trick is you have to wait until you're completely dry. So y'all didn't think I was going to leave that green, did you? I have decided to use Carriage House by Fusion as my Christmas green this year. So you'll be seeing a lot of that in projects um, coming up. So I painted the whole bottom of the sleigh with this Christmas, um, this is called Carriage House green. And then for the last step, well, let me get this painted and then I'll tell y'all. So my initial vision for this was the Santa Claus from the new transfer from IOD, the Candy Cane Cottage. But once I got it done and I tried him up on it, the scale was just wrong. He was too big. I didn't want to cut his feet off. I didn't want to cover the tree. So I decided I'd have to go with another route. So I found this deer from last year's transfer. I think it was called Christmas Valley. Um but you can't get that one anymore. But I had a few scraps left over and this deer was the perfect size. And um, so I thought he looked really great on this neutral background. Now, if you notice on the paper that I decoupaged on, there was a couple of deer on there. So if I had realized that I was gonna go this route, I could have just done that, but that's okay. We'll go ahead and make this a multimedia project. So I put his the transfer on, and if you've never done that, it's super simple. Just let you pull the backing off, rub it with the transfer tool, and then once you get it all on your project, you want to take that plastic backing and burnish it in, which just means rubbing all of it to make sure that it's down and stuck really well. Um, so I decided I love these garland swags on the Oh Christmas Tree mold. So I'm just going to do up both of them and go around the edges a little bit. I just love these garlands. I think they are so gorgeous. And the tree is gorgeous too, but we already have a tree in this. So I'm just going to use these garland. And the IOD molds are super easy to use. You just put your clay in and then you rub towards the outside edge and they have this micro rim and it's so easy to get it cleaned up really good around the edges. Before you put your clay in, you want to be sure and dust your mold with some cornstarch. That'll just help it release really easy from the mold. And then you just use gravity when you turn it upside down and the mold will pop right out. Um, you can also stick it in the freezer for a few minutes and that makes it really easy to get out as well. So I'm gonna make both of these molds up and then I'm, we're gonna glue them on the project and then we'll have one more step before this is finished. to use tight bond glue on my molds. I just put a little on and then spread it evenly all over the back. If you do happen to get some glue onto your project surface, just take a baby wipe and wipe it back off. Once I get these glued down, I'm gonna let them dry a little bit and then I'm gonna come back 
and uh, wax it. I'm gonna clear wax first, and I'm using the Fusion Clear Wax, and this is one of the scented waxes, and I am in love with using this wax. It smells so good. This is called Fields of Tuscany. Um, if you can get yourself some of this uh, scented wax from Fusion, I highly recommend it. I don't think I have any available right now. Um, this just came with my initial order, and I've been using the same one ever since. So um, after I get the clear wax on, I'll let it set up just a little bit, and then I'm going to bring in some... This, I think this is the um, aging wax from Fusion. And I'm just gonna go over the mold, just dust them just a little bit so it makes it look a little bit older and not so bright white. And then I'm gonna wipe the entire thing back. And this project is done and I'm in love with how it turned out. This is a beautiful decoupage paper and the transfer actually worked great with it. And I still have my entire Santa to use on another project. Project number three was just a random project that I picked up this uh, teapot that I had found. It is old. It's Mikasa, and it is made in Japan, but it was just in too bad of shape to be able to sell as is. So we are going to fix it up. So I'm going to go ahead, and it did take at least two and a half coats to cover this. It's like, an, it's like enamel, I guess. Um, it's not ceramic. So it took at least two and a half coats to get this covered really well, and I I used Fusion in the color casement because I wanted a really clean white. So I got it all painted up. I did leave the handle and the little um, brass rim because I thought those were really pretty like they are. The white had dried I am going to paint the little knob on the top and I'm going to paint the wood part on the handle with red this red is a very bright very Christmassy red this is called Fort York red um, in the fusion paint and I do have this one available if you're needing a bright red this is a beautiful one so I'm going to go ahead and give these two coats of this red paint and I'm already loving how this teapot's turning out, but we are going to do one more step that uh, just really ties it all together. And I'm so glad that I picked up this teapot and decided to do this. So in the IOD Candy Cane Cottage Transfer Pack, there is this transfer that is candy canes. And it is so cute with this white and red. I saw someone on the tribe on Facebook, the Iron Orchid Designs Creative Tribe Group, um, do this on, um, I think it was a vase, and I just loved how it looked, and this was my immediate vision when I decided to paint this teapot, was to put this transfer on it. If you are putting a transfer on a very curved surface like this, you basically just want to take it super slow and just do small areas at a time so you can manipulate your paper at like you need to, and that will just avoid having lots of really noticeable cracks in your transfer because if you try to do it all at once some of it's going to come loose before another part and you'll probably get some cracks in your image so just take it really slow and um, I do like to go around all the outside edges first and then finish up the inside on these really curved surfaces like this that helps also
So be sure once you get your transfer down that you use your plastic backing to burnish it in. Make sure it's all stuck down really well. And then you also want to seal in your transfers. The fusion paint does not have to be sealed. If, as long as you let it cure up really well, it has a built-in sealer. But you do want to seal your transfers into it. So I just did an entire uh, coat over the whole teapot with some fusion tough coat matte. And y'all, look how cute this is. I love this teapot. I'm probably going to put this one and maybe be all of tonight's um, upcycles on the website if you would like to purchase the items that I have upcycled. And you can also get your products to do your own. And that's uh, www.susieonthefarm.com. Moving on to project number four. I have had this brass shell dish for a while, and I never paint brass, but I just don't like this. It just is not pretty. It's ugly. So I thought that I could probably pretty it up some. So I'm going to go ahead and paint it with Carriage House, and we're going to put a transfer on it, and I think it will really help this, and anyone will be proud to display it with their Christmas decor or year round, this one will work as well. This paint covers so well and I only had to do, I did two coats, but really probably could have got away with just one, especially if I was going to distress it. But I'm not going to distress this one. I am going to get it all painted up and then we will go with the transfer. And I'm going to use another transfer from the Candy Cane Cottage pack it has all these pretty florals that are matching and I just chose one of the larger ones and we're going to put it directly in the center of this tray once the paint dries Um, this is a very curvy surface, so you see I'm using my fingers to try, kind of push it down into the cracks so it just knows where to lay. And then I will just do, like I said, just little bitty spots at a time until I get the whole thing rubbed on. It doesn't take long, and it's not hard. Just take your time, and um, once you get one corner going, you can begin to lift up on your package and lift slowly. That way, if something is not stuck down, you can lay it back down and put it right back on there. So this is already so much better. I'm loving how it looks, but I'm gonna take just a little dry chip brush and some of that casement, the white paint, and I'm gonna go around and hit all the high areas on the tray and even do in the center so you can really see all of the shell parts. And then once that paint has dried, I'm gonna come back and I'm gonna clear it with a clear matte sealer and now I love this tray. It looks so much better and I can get it out of my hoard and get it displayed or for sale on the website.
Today's final project was also a last minute decision. Um, I like to keep uh, lots of resin molds already poured up. If I pour one, I might as well pour several. So um, I've had these, these are from last year's bobble mold. Um, I hope you got one of these last year. Um, I don't have any more available, but I'm going to go ahead and paint these. This Fusion makes metallic paints as well, and this is the bronze color, and I just love the way these ornaments look painted in this uh, shimmery, bronzy color, and it really only takes one good even coat to cover these clear ones. Um, this is the two-part resin, but this is the one that takes um, over 24 hours to dry or something like that. Maybe it's 12 hours. Um, this is the other one turns white, the one that dries um, instantly. Um, but when I pour them up, I go ahead and pour several up, and I had a bunch of these made up, and they're going to go perfect with this project. So I got them all painted up with the metallic bronze, and then once that dries, I am going to get some dark wax. Um, they're pretty without it, but I just felt like the wax would really bring out um, all of those details in the mold. And there's a lot of them in these. Um, I love this bobble mold. There's so many things that you can do with it. To apply the dark wax, I just put it all over it. I let them sit for a few minutes and then I'll take a paper towel or a lint-free rag and just wipe the excess back off and then the what's left stays down in all those lower areas and really highlights all those details. So I thrifted this um, big board. It was already stained and someone had hot glued a um, clothespin on it and a bow, I think, for hanging a picture on. This is another leftover transfer I had from last year's Christmas Valley. I did not want to paint this board. I love the stain color and I love the look of the wood grain showing. And I thought that this black and white transfer would just be the perfect little background element. This is not going to be the feature. The feature is going to be those molds, but um, I like the look of this behind them, and it really decorated up this wood without taking away from the wood. So I put these little swag garlands in the top corners, and then I'm just going to glue the molds on in the center like they're hanging from the garland. And this project is so simple. I think it turned out really beautiful and really kind of dark and a little bit different from my normal uh, bright neutral colors, but still very neutral. But I just, I love that bronze color and I love this dark wood. Um, I hope you guys enjoy this project. In the comments below, let me know which one was your favorite of the projects that I did in today's video. Like I said, every time you comment, it helps YouTube share out my video and helps my channel grow. So I'm going to use the tight bond glue again. Instead of using my finger this time, I'm going to use a brush so I can try to get it really clean and uh, not really close to the edges. But if you do get some glue on your project, you can just wipe it back with a wet wipe or something and um, then, then it won't show. This does dry clear, but the sheen of it will show. So I like to keep it wiped back. Look how gorgeous this shelf sitter turned out. I am in love with it. I'm going to put this one on the website too if you're looking for something like this. 
Today's projects all were a little bit different, but I love them all. I cannot really decide on a favorite, but I do happen to think if I had to choose, I would pick this teapot. I'm in love with it. Thank y'all so much for watching today's video. I hope you have a great night and I'll see you again next week.